welcome to Firebase Release Notes for August, where we cover big and small releases from Firebase. We have six topics today, so let's dig in right away. Firebase App Hosting just got a major upgrade, so let's break down all the new features. First off, we just introduced wildcard subdomains. Now you can map countless subdomains to a single backend, perfect for use cases such as multi-tenant applications. App Hosting now supports NX-based monorepo apps in the backend setup flow. With monorepos, you can organize and manage multiple projects in a single directory. And if you need separate staging and production environments, you can now create and manage multiple backends right within the Firebase console. Lastly, the Firebase Server App class can now be utilized in Next.js middleware, allowing you to protect routes and redirect traffic without adding complexity to your components. We also had some updates on Jenkit for JS. In version 0.5.8, we added support for code execution in Google AI. And in version 0.5.9, we added vector search indexers and retrievers to the Vertex AI plugin. And we added support for streaming JSON output. In 0.5.10, we added support for the Gemini Files API, allowing you to upload images and other files to Gemini and prompt the model to describe what's in the image. We also added support for Vertex AI Gemini grounding with Google Search and Vertex data stores. Grounding with Google Search allows you to connect the model with world knowledge or up-to-date information on the internet. If you'd rather connect the model to data stored in your app's backend, you can use grounding with Vertex data stores. Jenkit for Go had many updates as well, as you can see here. Some highlights are, we have standardized interfaces for model, embedder, retriever, and indexer, along with corresponding veneers for easier API interaction. The team also worked on refactoring the AI generation API for improved ergonomics and fixed system prompt handling for Google AI and Vertex AI models. Next up, Firestore. Multiple inequality queries are now generally available. This feature allows you to use range or inequality filters on multiple fields in a Firestore document. Query Explain is also generally available. Query Explain is a tool that provides detailed information about the performance and cost of Firestore queries. This includes statistics such as latency, number of documents read, and indexes used. This information can be used to optimize queries and resolve performance or billing issues. There is a new version of the Firebase Apple SDK with some major updates. Here are a few of them. We made it easier for you to use Firebase in your Swift applications by including Swift-specific features, such as support for Codable or the Firestore query property wrapper in the main Swift packages. So now you no longer have to wonder if you should add Firebase Firestore and Firebase Firestore Swift. Just add Firebase Firestore and you're good. We updated the minimum supported platforms for compatibility with Xcode 15 and 16 and enhanced support for SwiftUI previews by fixing a long-standing bug that prevented Firebase's binary distribution from being used in combination with SwiftUI previews. Some of these are breaking changes, so check out the release notes page for more details. We also had some changes to Firebase Test Lab. Some devices, like the ones you see here, have been deprecated and will be removed at a later date. If you're currently using these devices, consider moving to a different device or an ARM virtual device, if available. The last update I have today is for Cloud Functions. Starting July 2024, Cloud Build changed the default behavior for how Cloud Build uses service accounts in new projects. This change is detailed in Cloud Build Service Account Change. As a result of this change, new projects deploying functions for the first time may be using a default Cloud Build service account with insufficient permissions for building a function. Check the release notes to know what you can do if you're affected by this change. And those were all the updates I had for today. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel below. My name is Marina, and I'll see you on a future episode of Firebase Release Notes.